So I thought that we'd take the model where we last left it and see what we can do in just a few minutes to try and get a nice looking render in sub Substance Painter. So my model here had subdivision levels. Um, you can see in the geometry tab here I had five subdivision levels that I had created earlier on. But I'm just going to emulate not having that. So I'm just going to uh, basically turn on Dynamesh, give it a relatively high number here and Dynamesh that. I say no to freezing subdivisions because I just want this to be, I want to lose my subdivisions here and just emulate as if we had just sculpted something with just Dynamesh turned on. So we have this mesh now, it has 2.8 million polygons. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate that mesh. Uh, I'll rename this one to Dyna for Dynamesh and I'll rename this one to Subdiv for the subdiv mesh that we're going to make. So in order to make that, the first thing we have to do is generate some low resolution topology and we're going to go down to the ZV mesher and just hit that button. The target polygon count here is 5, meaning 5000, but we're not going to actually get 5 because adaptive is turned on and adaptive will try and add extra polygons wherever it thinks might be necessary in order to get this shape. So um, we'll probably end up close to 5,000 but not quite as close as you would like, not as, as close as it would be if this wasn't turned on. And you see we go down from 2.5 million to 18,000, so not quite there um, on that front, but still a relatively low amount of polygons and enough for us to work in Substance Painter on this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap this from the Z plugin menu. Cool, that's unwrapped. And um, if we go down to the UV map, we can hit Morph UV to see that. Um, that's unwrapped nicely. That's fine. I'm, go I'm going to go out of solo mode. Uh, and now that we have this mesh, if we try to project the details from our Dynamesh object onto our low resolution subdivision cage, um, it's going to project anything that it sees. So I need to turn off the eye icon. So when I hit this project button down here, it will only look at subtools that have the eye turned on, in this case the Dynamesh object. We don't have enough detail on this yes, yet in order to get any, any kind of detail on, so I need to divide this at least once. When I divide it once, with the subdiv selected and the Dynamesh visible, I can hit Project All, and that will project those details. It can sometimes be hard to see when both of these are on at the same time, so what we can do is we can just go into solo mode, as long as the eye icon is still on for anything, ZBrush will still see it, even if you're only displaying something to you in solo mode. So with this, we can go back down to our geometry tab and we can hit divide one more time, our geometry roll up rather. So we're getting 291,000 polygons now, so I can project all again. We get that little bit more detail than we had the last time. Um, and I'm going to divide it one more time so this time we'll be up on 1.1 million and I'll project once more from this Dynamesh onto this subdiv. This was just a sketch of a mask, so I'm not going to be too precious about this. It seems to be working quite well. I'm not like I think we'll get it to a point that we're kind of happy with relatively quickly. So from here. I can turn off, um, I can keep solo mode on um, and I can turn off uh, show polyframe, shift F. And you can see this is our new mesh with subdivisions and because I'm in solo mode, it's now going to swap to just the Dynamesh version and you can see there's an imperceptible change between these two. So because of that, we can now take our Dynamesh version, this one, and just delete it. We don't need that anymore. We now have a version with subdivisions, which looks like this. When we go down into the lower subdivision, it looks like this. And this is the cage we will be sending into the geometry that we will be sending into Substance. But we'll also be exporting the highest resolution version of this in order to get normal maps um, baked from that. So the exact same process applies for the teeth. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because on the teeth, I've already created multiple subdivision levels on this. So we have four subdivision levels. That's the high one and that's the low. Um, but the same process would apply if this were a Dynamesh. You duplicate it, Z-remesh it, and project the details with just the eye icon on, on the teeth that you want to project. 
So now that we have both of these, we need to export uh, both of them. I'm going to turn everything to the high and then go to the plugin, Z plugin uh, roll up and go to FBX export. We're going to choose all and we want to, uh, there's no other setting really to choose. So we just hit export the demo folder or into a folder and we will call this um, mask underscore high dot FBX. That will then export these two files. It'll take a little while um, because they're quite dense. It's one million polygons on the mask alone. FBXs can be quite slow to export. Cool, that's done. So now we want to go to the lowest subdivision of both the teeth and our bone mask. So we're at the lowest subdivision here and we go back to our export and this time we choose mask low. This will be the low resolution one with UVs that we're going to work on. So from here we go into Substance Painter. So in Substance Painter, um, we go to File New, we'll choose the standard metallic workflow, and we'll choose our mask low, the one that we just exported. I'm going to change our document resolution to 2K, and I'm going to hit, hit OK. This will import the model, but as you can see, it's quite smooth. It's missing all of the detail. This is the low resolution cage. So the first thing we need to do is go to our texture set settings and hit bake mesh maps. So bake mesh maps, um, we can choose 2K for that and choose high definition. Uh, high definition, high definition mesh and hit open on that. So that will load the high definition one in and that's what's going to be used for baking out normal maps um, and all the other maps. So I'm just going to hit bake all texture sets and you'll see as these get baked, it'll apply them as it's baking them. Um, I actually left on ID, ma ID ma uh, maps and we don't need them. So it's just going to fail on them because we don't, you're not using IDs on this. So that's fine. But you can see these maps as they're all getting generated, being applied. And then ultimately we'll see it with the normal map on. And that's what we'll see in our viewport and the same for the teeth. Cool. And the ID errors I'm going to ignore, as we said. So now you can see that we're getting a lot more detail on this and it looks like it, it did in ZBrush. So for the purposes of getting a quick and dirty render out, we're going to use a a bone shader there is one that comes with a bone material there is one that comes with um it comes with substance a stylized bone so we can take that and just drop that onto our object um i had downloaded a teeth shader from substance source uh, there's a creature teeth i think that's it so we can put that on the teeth uh, it looks like it may need some adjustment because it's a bit heavy handed. So we close down this. Um, we'll, uh, on the creature teeth, I'm going to look at the dirt and damage and then see what we can do to change these settings here because it seems a little bit, it seems quite heavy. So the dirt is the first thing. Um, I'm going to scroll down here and just reduce the amount. Um, and maybe we will also look at the curvature map and bring the overall balance down a little bit it's just a little bit too much cool and contrast down um yeah i think that's fine um so for the mask or for the 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 head uh, with the bone material the, the stylized bone we can play around with some of those settings here as well um, such as in the dirt we can play with maybe the grunge amount um, or the scale of it it works a little bit better there uh, increase the contrast a little bit yeah, something like that will do. Uh, and from here, we'll just go straight into the IRA. 
Um, so this is the render that we're going to use to actually generate something half decent looking. Um, so from here we we'll choose a, a uh, an environment map. I'm going to choose. Um, well, this is worth playing around with and just trying to get some get some different environment maps. Rotate them around and see what they give you. The one thing I'd like to I like doing is just putting on a clear color and maybe just giving it a, a one background um, clear background so you don't have to see get distracted by the surrounds and you can just look at, at what the lighting is doing on its own. If you want to keep something fairly uh, nice, interesting looking, it's casting shadows across the surface. Um, as we said, we can try out a few different ones, see what works. Um, yeah, that one's pretty cool. Um, and we can then change this to there's some subtle differences when you have um, an infinite sphere or a sphere it doesn't really matter and then on this one it doesn't matter but um you can see that as I change the scale of the sphere the radius of it rather and um, it does actually change things a bit um, no need to change the ground any of that kind of stuff um, and what we will play with is the camera so we can play with the camera lens a little bit um, and we can turn on uh, some post effects where we can do some stuff like some tone mapping we can change the exposure if we need to um, the biggest one here is to change this um, the function here uh, you get some interesting different kinds of looks basically depending on what you're looking for uh, so let's just go with auto on this one um, and if you do glare you have to be careful with using just because um, it will kind of uh, if you lower the threshold on this you'll get some glare fairly quickly but it can look out of place very quickly um, vignetting Vignetting is pretty cool if we get it, and the more we do it, we can just kind of come in on on the because we're using a black background. It's not as evident, but it is still useful to just kind of focus us a little bit more on the center of the skull here, wherever we want the detail to be caught. Um, cool. Uh, the depth of field is actually here, so if you did want to put in depth of field, you could. Uh, choose your focus distance. I'm just going to exaggerate it here for the purposes of so if you have it like this then you can push your, fo your, your focal distance forwards and backwards. I'll actually turn off um, or increase the threshold for glare so it doesn't go crazy here on us like but um, if we increase the aperture again just for exaggerated you can see here as I'm pulling the focus in you can see how sensitive it is so bring that aperture right down if you are using it be subtle with it anyway um, so from there um, you, all you need to do really is uh, hit the little render uh, uh, yeah, render icon render settings and here and um, the default for this is uh, 10 seconds so I mean if you change this to minutes or something you'll get rid of all of these little sparkles and effects here um, and that will get you a final result so hope this helps uh, like I said it's a quick and dirty look in 10 minutes here we have a render kind of thing and um, it's not going to be absolutely amazing but it is going to be good enough to get you a decent looking result given that you've only spent 10 minutes on it hope this helps and uh, yeah if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments cheers bye